Hello there guys and girls, welcome to yet another tutorial on my channel. I will keep making those so if you don't want to miss out, make sure to subscribe. Today you will be learning how to create perfect orbital camera movement with a matrix style bullet time. Man, I'm so pumped to show you all these new tricks I've learned in the past couple of weeks. This tutorial is advanced, so I'm assuming that you know your way around Menu PC, which is the key tool for this method. If you haven't yet, watch my in-depth tutorial about this very versatile trainer. In one of my quick tip videos I've shown you, kinda as a bonus, how to make objects rotate by using a task sequence in Menu. And like that little trick, this tutorial right here is inspired by my buddy Sergio1969, who regularly shares his knowledge and displays his amazing skill in his videos. Pay his channel a visit, just look at this scene of Trevor spinning around. If you don't exactly see what's so clever about it, let me tell you, the camera actually moves in a perfect circular orbit around the subject without any change in speed or the distance towards the actor. Of course it is hard to see at this rotation speed, so let me show you the example with a simple setup and slower rotation. For comparison here's the clip from my smooth blend tutorial where I demonstrated how to make the camera move around a character by using the method look at target and then making markers around the character to which the camera moves via linear blend. If you look closely, you can see that it isn't perfectly circular, but the camera moves in a straight line to the next marker all the time. This shot took a lot of tweaking and it still looks... meh. So if you want to get a true orbital camera plus a cool matrix style bullet time, follow my instructions. Take a deep breath, because we're going down the rabbit hole. The Basics First, let me show you how the basic principle of how this camera setup works on a character that is standing still. You need to open up Menu PC Spooner mode by pressing F9 and spawn an object. You can pick whichever you prefer, however I recommend the Lucky Wheel O2A from the Casino Heist update. Why is that, my lord? You may wonder. Well, it has three key properties that make it easier to work with than other objects. One. It is very large and therefore easy to find in your map setup. 2. It is always easy to recognize which direction it is spinning in. And 3. You can clearly see the anchor point of the object. I will get back to why this is important in just a minute or two or three. After spawning this big wheel, you place it roughly where your character will be standing, which will be the center of the orbiting camera. Next you spawn any pad with menu. Go to the attachment options to attach it to the lucky wheel. Just for safe measure I like to switch the pad from dynamic to frozen in place and additionally go to the pad's animation menu and apply the animation standstill arm spread set to loop indefinitely. This will avoid any unwanted movement from the pad. You have to imagine this character as the anchor point for your camera later in the editor. Now it's time to make her spin right around baby right around. So in spooner mode select the lucky wheel and go all the way down to task sequence. Add a new task called snap to rotation and activate the checkbox relative. If you change the value for Y, the object will start spinning around that axis and the pad along with it. As you can see the camera would orbit vertically now and go through the ground. In this example I want to show you horizontal orbit though, which would be the Z value. <laughs> but whoopsie, what is happening here? Uh, yes, you can actually combine these values, which leads to a totally crazy camera orbit that could be used for scenes with a crashing helicopter like this. But let's go back to the basics, bitches! I'm gonna stop this task sequence and reset the values to zero. If any of your objects is behaving weirdly, you can always go back in menu and hit reset rotation to place them back in their default position. Now I'm gonna reactivate the task sequence and change only the Z value. And voila, there is your horizontal spin. This is a good moment to deactivate the collision on both objects to avoid them pushing away your player character. Next you gotta position this setup perfectly. 
Remember a minute ago when I said I would get back to that one thing? Yeah, the time has come. If you stay in this task sequence menu, you can clearly see this pink sphere as a visual aid for the rotation. And right here, where the pink line ends, this is the anchor point for the spinning object. In most objects you can spawn, this line will disappear into the object, as demonstrated here with the barrel, making it harder to center it perfectly with your character. This is why the lucky wheel is a good choice, even though it appears to wobble around a little bit because of this circumstance. If the character is right in the middle though, the shot will look less wonky. Once you've centered the object, you can move it out of the way. It doesn't need to be at the same level as your character, as I will show you later in the editor. It is important to move it out of the way though, because if your character is shooting in the scene, the bullets won't hit the object or the attached pad. The next step is to go to the properties of both the lucky wheel and the attached pad and making them invisible by setting their opacity to 0%, and then make them invincible too. This way they will not react to the stuff you are filming, be it shooting or explosions or like whatever. Before recording a clip there are a few things you have to consider and test thoroughly. The first thing being which rotation speed suits your scene best. In just a minute you will notice that the rotation feels much faster in Rockstar Editor than when previewing it with the spinning pink sphere. Title of your sex tape. However, this also depends on how far away the camera is going to be from your character, because objects traveling in a circular orbit need to move faster to complete one revolution in the same amount of time the farther they are away from the center. And this is how you get homeschooled in physics out of nowhere, bitch! The second thing to consider is the direction of the rotation. Of course, you can not only increase the values to 1, 2, 3 and so on, but also to minus 1, 2, 3 and so forth, which changes the direction. That is up to you. For this example, I will set the rotation on the z-axis to plus 3 and start recording for a while, as I fire this minigun. Now let's switch to the Rockstar Editor so I can show you what camera settings you need to make the effect work. After that I will show you some advanced tricks to improve further upon this technique. First you gotta switch to free camera as always and then change the move with target to your invisible pad that is attached to the lucky wheel. Watch out for the blue marker if you have multiple characters in your scene. Change the mount type to rigid here. And that's already the whole trick. If you replay the clip you can see the camera is spinning around the character in a perfect orbit. The great thing about this is that you can then continue editing the camera to your liking. The editor lets you change the depth of field, shake or zoom independently. So even though the camera is moving along with the invisible character, you can still focus on your actual character, making the background blurry. This method also has the advantage of letting you move the camera way faster around the subject than you ever could with placing markers on the timeline, thereby also saving you a lot of annoying work in the editor. Just let me show you a side-by-side -side comparison of my tutorial back then and the shot from the beginning again. By the way, when positioning the camera in the three-dimensional space, you don't have to pay any attention to where it is in relation to the invisible pad. All you gotta do is point the camera to the center. Use the square here for better aim. Of course, you can also experiment and point the camera outwards, upwards or downwards. You can even still use linear and smooth blends. Let me just move the camera over here and the first marker, which in itself already looks awesome during replay. And then the second marker is somewhere up here. Activate smooth blend and replay. With the right lighting at night, this could be some kind of superhero reveal shot where Batman looks down onto the city. Or combined with a time lapse using the time scaler mod, you can show a cool transition from night to day to show how the people in the office have been working or partying all night. By the way, if you're using Eve's motion blur for exporting your clips, the result of the quick rotation looks even more impressive. 
If you want to learn how to achieve this effect, please watch my tutorial on the mod extended video export. It is totally worth the longer render time. The smooth blend is also useful when you didn't position the character at the very center of the rotation. In that case, the actor will not be in the center of the shot anymore, obviously. Just place a second marker in the back and point the camera at the actor again. Then change the first marker to smooth blend. This isn't a perfectly circular orbit anymore, but it can lead to interesting results where it looks as if the camera is moving on an elliptical path almost. Bullet time! Now let us finally move on to the Matrix bullet time effect. If you haven't seen the movie, you're an idiot! But anyway, here's the famous clip of Neo bending over backwards to not get, like, killed, you know? You can achieve that same camera movement in Rockstar Editor by just slowing the speed of the clip with the rotating camera here. As you can see, the shells are dropping very slowly while the camera is seemingly moving at a regular speed. Unfortunately, the Rockstar Editor can't seem to handle the higher rotation speeds very well. So while a rotation of 7.0 looks okay-ish at regular speed, once you slow it down, the camera starts bumping as if it were tied to the invisible pad with a rubber band. This makes the clip unusable. The slower you set the clip, the more obvious this bug gets. I played around with this a little bit and came up with the following loose guidelines. For a clip speed of 5%, use a maximum rotation speed of 1.0. For a clip speed of 20%, use a maximum rotation speed of 2.0. For a clip speed of 35%, use a maximum rotation speed of 3.0. For a clip speed of 50%, use a maximum rotation speed of 4.0. For a clip speed of 100%, use a maximum rotation of 5.0. The image will start to tear a lot beyond this point and I don't even know why you would want to go faster than this. The experience may be different for you. If you can crank it up without getting that visual bug, let me know. Also, the higher the rotation speed is, the more you will see if the character is off-center from the anchor point of the rotating lucky wheel. Advanced Techniques Let us now move on to how you can refine this technique for your cinematics. For this one I will keep the setup visible so you can see what's happening. Also, it will be out of shot anyway. One key element is the lighting, especially in dark scenes. If you choose to spawn light props that are static, you can for example illuminate the character from both sides, otherwise it will be invisible once the cam films from behind. Alternatively, you can attach a light source to the orbiting pad, for example this work light right here. As you can see, it is moving along with the orbit now. Make sure to point the light source towards your character by changing the yaw value if needed. You will now run into the problem that you can't turn this object's opacity to 0% like the others because then the light will disappear too. In this case you go down here and change the level from 255 to 1. The light is still there, but the prop is gone. If the light is too dim, just make one or two copies of it they are all attached automatically. Let's record this clip. In the Rockstar Editor, this time it actually matters where you place the camera on the orbit, because of the light source. You can still place it anywhere you want, but it will look differently. You can place it in the same angle as the light prop, giving you full illumination at all times. Or you place it in a slight angle on the orbit, which creates these cool hard shadows. Another creative technique would be to attach the light source to a second lucky wheel that spins in the opposite direction than the one with the invisible pad. This way you get an interesting dynamic between light and camera. Up until now the character was static all the time. But what if you wanted to let the character walk around with an orbital camera? This is a little tricky because attaching the lucky wheel to the player will change the angle of the object and therefore the camera will not orbit in a perfectly horizontal fashion anymore. 
plus it will wiggle due to the character's movement. To avoid this you can do the following. First you create the spinning lucky wheel setup as shown before. The visible character needs to be frozen in place for this to work. Then you spawn an object like this bottle and attach the visible character as well as the lucky wheel to it. Then you go to the task sequence menu of the bottle and give it a task sequence called Achieve Velocity. You can set the duration to whatever you need for the scene, let's say 10 seconds. Next you choose the direction. There's the pink sphere again. Uncheck the relative box here. Align the sphere with the direction your visible character is facing and where it is going to walk to. The speed of the movement should roughly match the walking speed of the character with the value magnitude. This is easier to do if your character is already playing the animation, so you create a task sequence for it called Play Animation. Check this box here and search for any loopable walking animation, like this one. Since the bottle has a task assigned that changes the initial position of the setup, you should add another task called teleport to position and put that pink marker to where the bottle should start floating forward. This way the whole thing will loop indefinitely until you stop it. Now when you start the task sequence... nothing. That's probably because the bottle is set to frozen in place. You need to change it to dynamic first. Now the whole thing is moving along with the bottle. But if you leave the pitch value at zero, it will all move down into the ground. But why? I have found that for regular walking the value 6.0 or 7.0 for pitch and 1.5 for magnitude work best. You have to imagine this just like throwing a ball, where the ball is affected by gravity. That is why you need a force to counter it. The higher the magnitude value is, the lower the pitch value has to be for the character to walk in a straight line. So these parameters are closely connected. You can of course adjust the pitch for uphill or downhill walking too. If you notice that the walking animation stops for a few frames in the middle, try to sync it up by stopping the character's task sequence and starting it as soon as the bottle resets to the starting position. This is only important right after you build this setup because when you save it and reload the menu map, both task sequences of the pad and the moving bottle will start at the same time. That's why the duration of the walking animation should match the achieve velocity task, so 10 seconds in this case. Here's another pro tip. You can't adjust the pitch value in smaller increments here, but if you open the XML file of the menu map, you can search for your object, which is the bottle in this case, and just add a 0.5 here in the task sequence. This gives you a little more control, so the character will walk nicely on the ground. Finally, you just need to set the opacity to 0% for all these objects and record the scene. You can still adjust the pitch value on the fly as this setup loops over and over. This is a very controlled setup which is great for filming. If you compare the two shots now, you can clearly see that attaching the lucky wheel to the moving bottle, it looks much smoother than when attached directly to the pad. In the end, it is always a matter of taste and the message the shot should have. Let's try yet another example. Of course, you can also attach this whole spinning construction to a moving vehicle. In this case, it is especially important that you deactivate the collision on the lucky wheel and the invisible pad. Otherwise, there may be wild glitches happening while driving. At the very least, it will mess with your in-game camera. For your shot to work, you can either center the lucky wheel over the roof of the car, but I think it's better to put the center of the orbit where the driver is, because he or she is still the center of attention. Unless you're shooting car porn. In Rockstar Editor, you set up your camera as I've shown you before, the basic principle is the same, but you have to pay attention to the starting position of the camera. In this example the car is drifting around a left corner. 
Let's say you want the camera to face forward as the car turns. So you gotta move the camera around the car and keep replaying the clip to see if the camera points where it should at the right moment. Then you can adjust the camera settings in detail a bit more. For instance, here I'm using a linear blend to move closer to the car during the drift. This only takes two markers. You could also use smooth blend, but as soon as you need a third marker, you cannot use the smooth blend in this case, because the camera will lag behind the fast car too much, even if you turn off the blend easing here. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Just like voting! I'm joking. Go vote! Vanova for best channel 2020! The last technique I wanted to show you is that you can change the rotation speed of the lucky wheel while you are recording. To do this you go into the active task sequence snap to rotation of the object and change the Z value on the fly. If you want to speed up or slow down the rotation very slowly, you set the scroll sensitivity to 0.01 and then you tap or hold down the num6 or num4 key respectively. You can see that the pink sphere is responding to the changes in real time and of course, so will the camera in Rockstar Editor. If you want to do a quicker speed up, just increase the scroll speed to 0.1. This way, if you hold down num6 and then quickly let go, you can achieve the stylish speed ramp effect which is often used in music videos or fashion shots. Warning! Those were a few creative techniques for more inspiration in your cinematics. Overall I have to warn you though, as much fun as it is to play around with the rotating camera, you should absolutely not overuse this type of shot. And don't use too fast rotation speeds. Sometimes a slow spin with 0.5 is subtle enough to work out well. Your viewers might get nauseous from all the twisting and turning. Don't use this technique just because you can, but remember that the camera movement should convey a certain message and support the mood. Good examples for that would be a fighter who is surrounded by enemies, a car doing a donut in the parking lot, or objectifying attractive people. A bad example would be your Uncle Marvin sweeping the driveway. You get my point, right? I think that's about it for this tutorial. That one got a lot longer than I expected. Title of your sex tape. Hopefully you learned a bunch of stuff and laughed a little bit. If you have any questions about the techniques shown in the video, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Vanova over.